The first game that we're going to be starting off with is Alabaster Dawn, developed and published by Radical Fish Games. It is a 2.5D action RPG adventure that is not their first rodeo either, actually. They're also the creators of CrossCode, and I was looking in the comments for this video, and a lot of people were saying, oh, I can see where I can see the cross code in it. It's almost like cross code was the proof of concept for this game. So I've never heard of cross code before. There is a demo. I may check it out after. But without any further ado, let's watch the trailer and we'll discuss after that. OK. All right. Here goes. Oh, wait, I should probably. There we go. <laughs> Wouldn't be fair if I was the only one that saw it. OK, here we go. Some sort of stasis chamber. Hmm. She's asking where the gods are. <laughs> What did she do there? I'm amazed at what people can do with pixel art. It looks gorgeous. This Perry. That is a lot of hair. Hair and horns. Hmm. Oh, there's Heron Horns Girl again. This tree's huge. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that a capybara? All right, so that's the trailer for Alabasta Dawn. Now, let's read a little bit more about the game. Alamaster Dawn is an action RPG building on top of the best aspects of Radical Fish Games' previous title, CrossCode. So there you go. Featuring a deep and engaging combat system, challenging puzzles, and an epic story set in a curious world full of secrets to discover and places to explore. The shadow of the Nyx has fallen, hmm. warping the world into a wasteland and vanishing the gods and their people. Now Juno... The outcast chosen awakens to an impossible task. Bring it all back. Yeah, that was the feeling I got when she's like, where are the gods? And uh, yeah, she was, she's like, it seems like, is this a, is this a trope in games where it's like you wake up, everything's gone to shit and you don't know why. So you have to figure out, first of all, what happened and then you have to fix everything. Not that it's bad. I mean, it's fun. It, it, it kind of puts you in the middle of the story. Right? You don't know what happened before, so you have to figure that out first. And that informs you going forward. So, let's see why it gets chosen a lot. Alone and without the guidance of the gods, Juno finds herself in a ruined world she once called home. Her task, awaken the rest of humanity and rid the world of Nyx. Only in unity can the world be rebuilt, and only through the strength of a chosen can the curse be broken. I wonder if there's others. Hmm. But where are the gods? How long has humanity slept, and what is the mysterious entity known as Nyx? So this is promising to be 30 to 60 hours of playtime, uh, seven unique areas, and many secrets to discover. Rebuild settlements, and we saw a little bit of that. I was curious about that, because... Uh, where was it? It was about here, yeah. I'm just going to mute this. So you see what starts off as like a... basically just a camp and building materials, and I'm guessing these are settlers or something. And there's hair and horns. I'm just going to call her that. Because when you see her running, all you see is this... You see basically a um, big bunch of red hair with horns sticking out of it and feet. It's kind of funny. Yeah, so then, okay, then it evolves into like a settlement. And I'm wondering... I'm always wary about settlement building in games. Because does it have to do anything with the story of the game? 
I'm looking at you, Fallout 4. Does this, is this a necessary task? Is this something that you have to do or is this something you can sidestep and bypass completely? If you, if that is the case, will this play into the story at, at all? I mean, will it make it easier? Will it unlock certain things or will it provide you with a different ending? Who knows? I'm always curious about that. Um, where will we? Rebuild settlements, establish trade routes, and advance science, oh, by helping people. Each new advancement will be accompanied by the settlements changing visually, opening up new paths and opportunities. And we did see that. I'm always curious when you have a game world that involves magic, but also incorporates science. And I'm wondering, like, how do those two work together? Dance around with your enemies. Experience a deep and fast-paced combat system inspired by Devil May Cry, Kingdom Hearts, and CrossCode. <laughs> Take full control over a total of four elements and eight unique weapons, of which two can be slotted into each element at any given time. To fight the many different enemies found in the game, you will have to make use of everything at your disposal, and to help with that, you can switch your setup at any time, even during combat. Ooh, that's handy. Unlock combat arts on each weapon's skill tree. Yes, that's one skill tree per weapon. Whoa. That's deep that you have a weapon you have a skill tree per weapon huh okay to pummel enemies in style and top it all off by equipping divine arts to each element unleashing powerful spells to finish off even the hardiest of foes exploration while the gods may be silent they have left many structures and secrets for you to find solve challenging puzzles using your weapons and team members parkour along hidden paths find treasure or simply collect various resources while exploring the world of tiran sol i hope i said that right treasure found while exploring can contain a host of different rewards such as new recipes for the cooking system oh there's a cooking system gems to slot into your weapons upgrade materials and many more Whatever you do will always be a help to you or the various communities you will come across. Can't reach some loot yet? No worries. The world map allows you to place reminders, fast travel between landmarks and checkpoints, and mark objectives. It's up to you to decide how much guidance you want. Alabaster Dawn gives you plenty of systems to build your main character, equip gems into your weapons, and core to activate powerful enchantments. These things range from simple stat increases to situational buffs that can change the way you engage enemies. Expand your available gem slots using the skill tree and craft slash upgrade gems via particular NPCs called artificers. Hmm. You can even level up your healing options. Ooh. Cook dishes at resting spots to increase your stock of healing bulbs and unlock powerful temporary boosts. Oh, it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like the Witcher where you have potions that you ingest before battle. By cooking a great variety of dishes and using your boosts, you will increase your palate level. Hmm. Further enhancing your effects, the effects of your future meals. Interesting. With plenty of ingredients at your disposal, it would be a waste not to turn them into precious food XP. So it's almost like you develop an, an acquired taste for something. <laughs> System requirements for, uh, I don't know what are the platforms, if this is coming out on any other platforms, but for PC, it will run on what looks like damn near anything. So yeah, this actually looks like it's going to be fairly in depth as far as what you are able to do within the game, both combat and abilities wise, but also non-combat stuff too. So if you enjoy the settlement building, the recipes, all that stuff, I mean, I know I do. And I mean, the combat wise, I just want to have a look again at the combat here. Graphically, it kind of looks like a classic JRPG, but it's, it's real time which is neat. Yeah, it is a capybara. Okay. So we've got ranged weapons as well. Now, those look like they're significant because you see those doors a few times. And I wonder what she's doing there. She's either summoning a boss, defeating... I don't know, maybe that's the source of, like, evil in the area, and she's cleansing it. I don't know. Yeah, see there. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's another door. Another one up here. It looks like there's, I don't know, runic stones around it? Something sealed behind here? Or maybe this is what the area looks like after it's been cleansed. Because this looks kind of beautiful and idyllic. 
really does. The movement looks cool, too. Like, you'd be able to boot around the levels. Ooh, a zip line thing. Wait, what's this? Okay, so it looks like we're locking on to different... different targets. Yeah. Oh, those are the... Okay, so that's a puzzle. Hmm. Yeah, it looks quite interesting. There, unfortunately, is no release date. And there's no demo available. But you can check it out yourself and wishlist it if you're interested.